Okay, so this is speed skating. This is what I do. Uh, we covered head to toe and uh, the fastest skaters go beyond 50 kilometers per hour. It's literally like flying on thin ice on very thin blades. And um, I think it's pretty cool. Um, so you would think being an ice speed skater in India is like walking on thin ice. And you would be absolutely right. Um, forget the road not taken. There wasn't even a road because uh, being the first Indian uh, in this sport, I had to carve out this road that I wanted to skate through. Uh, for a girl from Pune, where snow is just a dream, I think I've come a long way, quite literally. Um, for most of us born in the 90s, our parents would want us to um, you know, enroll in some activities. Um, for my mother, it was roller skating simply because um, a roller skating club was just walking distance from our house and I was a hyperactive child. My mother just wanted me to go somewhere, get tired, come back home and sleep. So that's how I started roller skating. Otherwise for her, I think it would have been badminton or tennis, something more sophisticated, um, something that is more popular. But um, this is how I started roller skating and my roller skating days were the days that taught me um, that I would have to work extra hard to stand out. Um, at the same time, any child that is in sports is not exempted from the average expectations of Indian kids, um, like getting good grades, um, better grades if you have good grades, extracurricular activities, and obviously the list goes on. Um, something that I learned about myself from my sport is that I'm not a quitter. Uh, I think we all explore ourselves and we find out something or the other about ourselves. Uh, this is what I found out about myself, that I was good, but I wasn't the best. Um, I was doing well, but I, was do I wasn't doing great. I was winning medals, but those medals were not gold. Um, every state and national level competition that I qualified for never made me feel like I want to give up, even after consistently not winning. Um, I felt like I want to keep trying because uh, in those days, not winning a gold was like losing. That was the kind of atmosphere that I was brought up in. Um, so at our club, even tying the laces, we were all very competitive. Who's going to tie the laces first? Who's going to get on the ring first? So that was the kind of um, unhealthy competition that was going on. Um, something that I always thought um, was not necessary and I was always looking for other options and exploring and I always thought I wanted to change my sport. Um, nevertheless, roller skating gave me uh, some of the best memories. It gave me a lifetime of friendships. It also gave me an amazing boyfriend who's now my husband. Um, along with 10 to 15 nationals, a few medals here and there and mind you, all this before I turned 15 years old. Um, because after you turn 16 in India, uh, you know, after your 10th or 12th standard, you're supposed to stop playing around and you're supposed to focus on your real careers. Like sports cannot be a real career, right? I mean, you have to stop. Um, but my parents were a little unconventional, just like my sport. And uh, they were okay with me doing my sport. But of course, they were... Um, like any other typical um, Indian parenting, they still wanted me to pursue my uh, education. So I was 17 years old when I first stepped on ice. It was in Kashmir, um, in Gulmarg. Um, it was just like for fun, casual participation at the Winter National Games. Um, turns out ice skating is way more difficult than roller skating. It's much harder than it looks. And uh, balancing on those thin blades in cold, frigid temperatures is something that is not at all appealing to us in the East. Um, especially being used to summer sports, um, being comfortable in the shorts and t-shirt, we feel like um, it's, it's really out of our comfort zones. Um, harsh weather uh, makes it like really less appealing. But nevertheless, uh, after a few days of training at the national games that were held in Gulmarg, Kashmir, I won a bronze medal. Um, I wasn't 
satisfied with my performance it was not up to my potential so um i really wanted to like keep trying and i wanted to keep skating more but in india we don't have ice rinks we don't have the infrastructure so you have you really have to wait for the next year for the winter to come back and then you have to travel to shimla or kashmir but then that's what i did um i started traveling to shimla every year there was uh, the, the, there are these camps hosted uh, by the ice skating association and at the end of the camp there is a national that they host so i started participating in these camps and nationals and every single year for 5 years in a row um i was winning gold medal there um that's when i think i found my new found love for ice skating i felt like it was a calmer sport also because it was a newer sport in india it had uh, less chaos uh, obviously less politics and it just felt like a nicer cleaner sport to me that's how my um, love or passion towards ice skating began uh, also i feel like um, when i don't do well is when i really want to keep going after doing all these nationals in chimla i felt like what's next uh, you know you can't just keep playing nationals you have to have uh, bigger goals and as human beings we are greedy and we always want to like keep going forward uh, lucky for me the ice skating union uh, was giving out scholarships to the top skaters in uh, developing nations for them to go to um, like these big camps um, with top quality coaches and the best infrastructure in the world um, this academy was in germany and i was selected to go there um, that was my first introduction to like a real ice skating rink and professional skates i had never seen professional skates before that this is where it all began my first uh, first time on an international track and um, i realized that i had so much to work on also the coaches realized that i needed to do my basics i was just literally thrown into a pool of world's best skaters at the world's best academy and what i needed was to learn basics so my coach um suggested me to go to canada and uh, because he's canadian he helped me um get there and um, that's how my the next phase of my life began um, so so yeah um after germany was done um i went to canada that's where the biggest second phase of my life began um going to canada was like opening up to these new things um i was um, learning so many different things i learned that um you have to being a national champion in your country doesn't really make any difference in the world you have to go back and start from scratch you have to learn this um learn this new sport because until i went there i was just like a roller skater trying to ice skate i wasn't like an ice skater um i literally looked like a roller skater it looked like i would have uh, how i would be skating on the road um but yeah i didn't even know that uh, speed skating involves so many other things like uh, lifting weights we almost had to be pro runners we had to be pro cyclists almost um and i was completely unaware of these things i still remember once when my coach uh, said to me um that i really need to work on my chicken legs and she said that to me in front of the whole team where um, it was insulting enough for me to you know um start working harder eat healthier uh focus on myself transform and uh, start lifting heavier and that is when i decided that i'm not going to look like an indian skater on ice but i'm going to look like a speed skater just a speed skater um and training in these camps outside the country is when i realized a stark difference um from what i'd experienced in india versus what i experienced abroad um abroad the biggest focus is quality and uh training in india was more about quantity so my coach in india would always tell me go do 500 laps uh versus abroad it was always like even if you do 5 laps they really have to be top quality high quality 5 laps and i think um don't we all um i mean we can relate to this even in education right um so many times we're just told go and study for 5 hours does that even make any sense i mean it makes sense to actually think about oh go do these two chapters well 
or study this particular thing very well instead of just you know blindly telling us to like go study for 5 hours or 10 hours so that uh, was the biggest difference quality versus quantity um and i realized what it takes to live the life of a full time athlete my life was literally just eating training and sleeping um not because that is what athletes do but also because um i didn't even have the money to like do other things at that point of time i didn't have friends when i uh, went abroad to hang out and i um i think i was being a little too hard on myself when i started traveling because uh, i had this burden on my shoulder that oh i can't go back to india without um getting these good results so i started living this um life of an athlete just literally eating uh sleeping and training um and loneliness was like my friend chocolate was like my distraction and social media was literally like my enemy because every time i would go on facebook i would see people posting about their birthdays and diwali and while i am sitting alone abroad people thinking that i have this glamorous life just because i'm traveling to all these countries um yeah but on the other hand i also think um i was uh, changing so many things which i didn't even realize um i had already become an inspiration for the next generation of skaters um i made national records i improved myself and broke my own records again uh i got interviewed a lot i got so many titles um like india's ice queen secret superstar or uh, fighting ice with fire things like these that started coming in magazines and social media newspapers and um all these other platforms um this journey i felt like was not just mine anymore i was actually um the reason for inspiration for so many young athletes um not just skaters also anymore anybody who wanted to pursue their dream their passion and um someone who just needed some motivation to move outside of india not just for work or education but any passion that they wanted to follow um i made sure that i was setting a good example while i was doing this so in every interview that i would answer um i would get questions like why i'm traveling so much or how my life is abroad and i would make sure that i tell them that i travel so much not because i enjoy traveling or it's you know it's glamorous or anything because it's really not um i would tell them that i'm doing all this because there is no infrastructure in india even tomorrow if there is an ice rink in india i would literally pack my bags i'm in us right now and i'll come back home because my family is there everything is there so the reason that i travel so much is just because of my sport and because i need to do it um so spending all this time abroad opened so many things for me of course i got this exposure at a very young age but um this life that seems to be uh, very fun and glamorous is really not what it looks like um when all this happens i think um the only choice you have is you either give in you give up or you give it your all and i chose that third option so um also there are these big things that um you have to face every day like getting rejected by big and small companies you know all these companies would come to me and say you are amazing you've done this uh, you know you uh, have reached these new heights you have so many achievements but we're so sorry we cannot sponsor you <laughs> because uh, there's no visibility to the sport sport is in popular it's a winter sport it comes under winter olympics so um it becomes very difficult to convince someone to invest in this sport um but i'm sure everybody who um first started out always has to go through this phase um but then again um it's quite disappointing to understand how little we know about any olympic sport in our country um there is a lot of ignorance uh, lack of awareness um and honestly this can be really destructive for athletes because um it can kill their dedication their hard work and talent um but having said all this mm-hmm. i also always get questions like um when will you qualify for the olympics or what if you don't qualify for the olympics um 
And honestly, my answer to that is, um, didn't I already make it here? I mean, I'm giving a TED talk even before going to the Olympics. And uh, I didn't even plan this. I literally just followed my passion. Um, I started working hard with a purpose and uh, I ended up becoming this pioneer woman in India. Um, Olympics or not, this journey has been amazing. It's nothing short of a roller coaster ride with sweet and sour experiences like we all have. Um, and I think following my passion has meant way more than what um, any recognition or medals will ever mean. Um, so whoever said that the journey is more important and more beautiful actually than the destination was right. I never imagined that I would, um, I would gain so much and I would achieve so much on my way to my big dream. So I think after years of traveling alone, uh, reflecting on my own choices, overthinking and constantly calculating expenses, especially dollar to rupee, um, I'm still glad that I did not let these inner demons kill my dreams. Because as we all know, doubts always kill more dreams than failure ever will. Um, so if you ask me, uh, where do I go next? then uh, honestly, I have to say I have no idea because no one has been there yet.